Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. As an INTJ, it's not gonna be a secret that you're gonna be interested in existential and philosophical problems. As an INTJ, one of the fundamental existential problems is that of self-acceptance. Why should I accept myself the way I am? What is the point of self-acceptance? The idea, the modern idea is you're supposed to accept yourself. I think that's an insane idea, by the way. Really, I think, I can't think of a more nihilistic idea than that you're already okay. It's like, no, you're not. And the reason you're not is because you could be way more than you are. So what do you want to be? You want to be okay as you are? Or do you want to strive towards what's better? Human beings are insufficient in and of themselves and need the movement upward. And so they need to conceptualize something like the highest good and then to strive for that. And the thing is, is that there isn't any difference between conceptualizing the good and being judged. Because if you're going to conceptualize the good and move towards it, what you have to do is separate from yourself all those things that aren't good and leave them behind. Often INTJs reject the idea of self-acceptance because they prefer the idea of self-betterment. INTJs are introverted thinkers in the sense that they pursue a perfect ideal of self, a perfect version of themselves, a better version of themselves. They are goal-oriented types that strive towards a vision or a concept or an idea of a better world. And they believe that to reach this better world, I have to get rid of and deal with and admit to problems that I have on a personal level. INTJs are constantly trying to better themselves and because they do they can often struggle with the question of self-acceptance and self-love. Why should I love myself? What is self-acceptance? What if self-acceptance is just a comforting blanket? What if it's something that's keeping me from becoming better? Shouldn't I be critical of myself? Shouldn't I be judgmental towards myself? Shouldn't I be harsh on myself? Shouldn't I be setting standards for myself? Because the INTJ is a thinking type, a lot of time the question of feelings or how you feel about something is inferior to the question of what is objectively correct, what is objectively right or wrong. The question of how I feel about myself or how I feel about the world around me is inferior to what lifestyle am I living, Who, what kind of a person am I, what kind of a job do I have, and how am I doing at my job? Often the implication of the INTJ is to strive towards excellence, to strive towards human excellence, to strive towards being the best at what you do, to strive towards being the best of the best. Let's hope the smart people occupy more positions of complexity, right? Because they're smarter. Would you want it any other way? Okay, and then so, and that's great. The number one predictor of accomplishment in Western societies is intelligence. And what the hell are you going to do if you don't try to aim for the top? You know, flap about uselessly and whine about your life? It's not helpful. A fundamental problem for the INTJ personality type is also whether our society is just. If I am smarter than other people, if I work harder than other people, will I get rewarded? What if the society isn't going to be just? What if the hierarchies of competence aren't going to be there? What if I'm not going to be appropriately rewarded for my competence? What if there are people in our society that are gonna get ahead despite the fact that I'm more intelligent than them, despite the fact that I have a better vision or a better idea than they do? What if they are gonna get ahead? Don't be thinking that creativity is such a good thing. It's a high risk, high return strategy. So if you're creative, you just try this. There's creative people in this room, man. You guys are gonna have a hell of a time monetizing your creativity. It's virtually impossible. It's really, really difficult because First of all, let's say you make an original product. You think the world will beat a pathway to your door if you build a better mousetrap. It's like, that's complete rubbish. It isn't, it isn't true in the least. If you make a good creative product, you've probably solved about 5% of your problem. Because then you have marketing, which is insanely difficult, and then you have sales, and then you have customer support, and then you have to build an organization. And 
you have to, if it's really novel, you have to tell people what the hell the thing is. It makes sense then that Jordan Peterson's videos are full of the message, work harder, try harder, persevere, persist, keep going, keep pushing yourself, keep doing your best. I'm not guaranteeing it's gonna work, but it's worth the effort. The INTJ is intrinsically wired to want to aim for a higher goal, an ideal of perfection, an ideal of themselves, an ideal of a better world, no matter what the world wants, no matter what the people around them think, no matter if they're gonna succeed or not, they are gonna get intrinsically rewarded, they're gonna feel better about themselves, they're gonna have a feeling of pride, a pre feeling of satisfaction, a feeling of joy, because they are moving towards something they intrinsically care about and value and want for themselves. And yeah, I'm not gonna say they're not gonna have bad ideas. They're not gonna have days where they're not gonna wallow in self-pity or envy. They're not gonna be days when they think that no, and no matter what I do, it's not gonna work out. They're gonna have those days because for every light, there is a shadow. The more you believe and tell yourself that your work, your hard work, your goals are gonna pay off, the stronger the bad swings on the bad days are gonna be, the stronger the doubt, the stronger the feeling that no, it's not just, it's not right, I am being uh, made a victim, I am going to be persecuted, people are going to reject it, people are going to go against me, people are going to misunderstand me. And the stupid, lazy people out there, they're gonna get what they want and they're gonna succeed, despite the fact that they didn't deserve it. But as soon as that bad day has gone, as soon as the INTJ has looked to themselves and thought to themselves, am I gonna sit here and keep complaining? Am I gonna sit here and keep feeling bad about this? They're gonna go back to their natural state again. They're going to start reflecting on themselves. They're gonna start thinking, what am I doing wrong? What can I do better? What am I failing at? What am I needing to improve at? What am I needing to do differently? What is the world around me, what are the opportunities, what is the bigger pattern, where am I going and where am I going to end up if I keep going the way I do now. And then they're gonna take steps to correct their vision, they're gonna take steps to fix their work and their progress and their projects, they're gonna change their approach, they're gonna go and finally do the learning necessary, they're gonna go get the skills necessary, they're going to go set the targets necessary, they're going to go and make sure that it becomes not just an idea in their head, but an actual work, an actual project, an actual journey uh, with actual steps and actual action. I think as an INTJ there comes a time where you gotta realize these are the cards that I have on my hand. These are the things I can play. This is the way I can play it out. This is the way I can uh, keep moving forward. And this is what I can control. I can control myself, and I can control my journey, and I can control the steps I can take. And I cannot control the world around me. I cannot control what's gonna happen, what people are gonna do, or how people are going to respond to it. I can only control my own cards. I can only control my own style. I can only control how I choose to play my game. And eventually that's gonna have to be enough. Okay, sometimes I'm gonna have bad draws, sometimes my cards are not gonna work out, sometimes other people are gonna have better cards, sometimes things are not gonna work out, but this is what I got and this is what I've gotta keep dealing with and this is what I gotta keep playing with. There is nothing else and the more I can focus on that, the more I can focus on myself, the better I can play the game. Can you relate to this as an INTJ? Can you relate to Jordan Peterson? Have you had these struggles? Have you had these worries in yourself? Have you chosen to respond the way Jordan Peterson does? Or have you chosen to respond differently to these questions? How do you feel about self-acceptance versus self-embetterment? How do you feel on the nature of our society and on the nature of hierarchies of competence? Do you feel there are just hierarchies of competence? Do you feel Jordan Peterson is right in his struggle and in what he does? Or do you have to have you decided to respond differently? Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video.